Hey, thanks for joining me. Let me figure out what's going on with Facebook. But I had a shower this morning, so. But I had a shower this morning, so. I don't smell like I'm on a camping trip. So let me just make sure this is up now. I am. I had brought my featherweight for camping, but it is literally a hundred degrees outside. Yeah, exactly a hundred degrees outside. And it's too hot to sit outside sure and do my, um, my sip and so. Facebook, I can't see you just yet. Just give me a few minutes. Is anybody on Facebook? Go ahead and say, hey, tell me where you're from. Hi, Linda, you're on. I see you. So we were having an interesting conversation. My husband and I were on the way here. It was probably more of a one-sided. I can put that right here if you don't mind. Okay. Um, one-sided conversation. You know, me talking and him just going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, it was, I was thinking about how much our lives have changed in the last six months because of the virus and because of COVID. And I was not, I didn't mean it in a, a negative way because I think you could probably really easily tell me all of the things that are bad about the season. Important birthdays missed and the anniversaries and all that fun stuff. But I was thinking specifically about home and how our whole uh, definition of home has really changed. Um, our homes used to be where we would come home to after work, uh, after our kids got home from school, we'd be home. We would spend weekends in our home, but all of a sudden our home is everything. Our home is our office. Our home is our school room for our children. Hi mom. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, but it's just really changed quite a bit, our concept of, of what home is. I know for my family, when all of this got kind of crazy and we realized that we were probably not, you know, our son wasn't coming home this summer like he normally does from Hawaii. And uh, <laughs> Bridget, Bridget from Facebook says, it's too hot for a sip and so, so I'll just watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, Lisa Meadows is on. Hi, Lisa Meadows. Anyway, and so we we talked very intentionally about what what you know what we could do to our home that would make it more comfortable. Uh, one of the things. Oh, Becky. Hi, Becky. You asked me a quilt as you go question. Hi, Sherry from Chattanooga and Missy from Redmond. I'm in that cheese. I'm not in Redmond today. Um. My mom wants to know how the new trailer is. So for those of you who are just joining me for the first time, last weekend I was in Reno with my husband picking up a trailer for camping. And not like a regular camping trailer, but like, um, how do you describe it? It was like an overland trailer. So it, it's meant to be off-grid. Uh, it's a rooftop tent. There's no hard walls. And uh, so anyway, we um, picked it up and this is our first, our maiden voyage. And we've learned some things, like we should bring our manuals with us the first time we leave with it to deploy the awning and stuff properly. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so the awning is not out. Hi, Margaret from Boise. 105 in Boise, Idaho. Holy guacamole, that's hot. Um, so Becky, you want to ask me if you are still on, ask me what your quilt as you go question is because I haven't been able to, <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie from Facebook said, are you enjoying your camping weekend? I am enjoying my camping weekend. Um, <laughs> hi Ellie. Why do you, Ellie, why are, do you have the rainy afternoon in East Texas and we're, we're all dying out here in, in Seattle area. We're supposed to be the ones with the rain, not you. <laughs> we'll keep our we keep our <laughs> Lisa Meadows from Facebook says we keep our manuals in our camper yeah 
lesson learned. <laughs> um, did everybody check out the quilt as you go? Hi, Deb Sews 19. I'm calling you on Monday. By the way, you're on my you're on my Monday to do list, girl. Um. Anyway, the quilt as you go video dropped. Oh, I know what you're asking, Becky. You were asking about the quilt design. I have not dropped. I did not get that done before I left. I tried really hard, girl, but it did not happen. So I will have them up on Monday. The quilting pattern for the quilt as you go. Where are my little scissors? Oh, what I'm sipping tonight. Since I'm in a car and I'm not going to be illegal, I'm sipping my LaCroix, my Key Lime LaCroix. So other than the quilting design, does anybody, there's my scissors, have any questions for me about the, the block construction on the quilt as you go? I tried to pick really simple, <laughs> simple instructions. So Margaret from Facebook says, keep all your receipts with your manual at the same time. Good for guarantees and warranties. Yes, that's also a good note. And Ellie said, we needed the rain and my car was washed today. And now it's dirty again. So you know what the old wise tale is, Ellie? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> my husband just said it. <laughs> The wise tale, Ellie, is the reason why you got rain is because you washed your car. So the rain is your fault. <laughs> In Seattle, whenever I wash my car, it rains. Hence me not washing my car very much. It's been weird not having any cell coverage at all. No cell coverage at all. Um, we... This is pretty rustic camping. Ooh, okay. Do this. Oop. Oop, 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 oop. Okay. Becky. Oh, totally okay. Thank you. I got the setting square figured out, but not the sampler one. In order to quilt it all in one pass. Okay. That's, I'm gonna give you the continuous line quilting instructions because I am all about continuous line quilting. And Becky says, <laughs> Becky says, no manuals, more adventure. <laughs> it's not how it works. <laughs> Wish, oh, Lisa Meadows who lives in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's probably 200 degrees there today, said, wish that would work. Never rains when I wash my car. Well, honey, you live in the desert. <laughs> Linda Wood says, I'm trying to finish a hand piece, uh, a double wedding ring quilt. Oh, double wedding ring quilts. Girl, you are, that is a big undertaking. I've done one, one, one double wedding ring, um, that is not going down ever again. I'm never having one. <laughs> the pictures of the finished blocks were helpful. Okay, okay, good. Green eggs and spam and ma'am. I love that. <laughs> hey Darlene, Rhonda on Facebook says, oh, Emily, Ann and I are doing great. Thanks so much, that's awesome. Rhonda, you're my new friend in, um, you were in, where is it? It was Houston area. You had a a really pretty accent. <laughs> I'm glad Emily and you are doing great. I only give my sewing machines one name. Do you guys give them two names? Oh, Lisa Meadows says not quite 200, but 117. Eek, eek. Where we're staying here in Eastern Washington, yeah, it feels a lot like Phoenix. It's probably more like high desert, so think show low. Um, and uh, it, it, it's really arid, and there's a lot of agricultural um, fields here. Um, this is where the beginning of the, where the apple orchards, you know, the Washington apple. Um, this, there's a lot of uh, 
orchards and uh, stuff around here. Yes, Houston, I thought that was you. Rhonda had me speaking with a, um, a southern accent by the time we got off the phone together. Linda Wood doing it all hand sewn black and white hand sewn I know I'm doing hand sewing too so I can't give you too hard of a trouble of, of time there Linda but if if you have known me or sat on any of my uh, lives you know that I'm not particularly a hand sewer I feel like God created sewing machines and he expects us to use them but <laughs> So if this is the first time you're joining me, let me uh, set your expectations here. Of course, I'm in the South, Every, everything has two names. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Um, this this uh, little show on Friday nights is my, um, is my lax show of the week. I literally get on here on Friday night, usually with featherweight when I'm not camping, and I talk to my girls. So um, if you're looking for hardcore information, that would be more of the Monday show, which is the Ask the Doctor, um, and then more education on Wednesday with the, with the quilt as you go so along that I'm doing a 16-week series on. So this is just me kicking back with my ladies and having fun. My lady Kathy and Sewing Machine Dan are not on tonight because they had the nerve to have family in town. But she messaged me so I didn't think she was like sick or something. So, cause she she wasn't gonna be on. It's, it's the social hour, that's what Linda Meadows says. <laughs> Doing mini hex on the front porch, nice. Linda Wood says, oh, she has a 1950, oh, you named the, the 52 Tula May. I love that. Linda, is that a family name? Hi, Karen. Karen G. Feller. What medium are you using for? Oh, my mom wants to know how I'm on camera. So I have sitting in my car, I found a good LTE signal, four bars. I have my iPad and then my phone. And so I am simply streaming this on my cellular devices. I didn't trust any Wi-Fi's here, Wi-Fi's. So I thought it might be kind of fun to talk about our featherweight, so since I don't have a featherweight in front of me. And I want everybody who wants to reply to tell me where what age you guys started sewing with at? Oh, Tula May is your mom's name? That is awesome, I love that. So what age did you start, start sewing? For me, I had a grandmother that sewed. Uh, she was actually a seamstress and she made wedding dresses and everything. And she was my mame, my mom is on uh, also. My mom, didn't sew that much actually but her mom did and so she I remember very vividly I was born and raised in New England um, as a little girl being over at my meme's house and sitting at her sewing machine with her while she made our Halloween costumes and stuff um, I actually have her sewing machine in my private collection which is an honor and a blessing that another family member was kind enough to send her to me um, so I was a little girl when I started sewing and it was mostly like, I remember my mom back before screen time and a lot of TVs and stuff, she would, oh, my mom said she started in grade school. I'm sure Meme made you. I'm sure it wasn't voluntary. But um, anyway, she would get, assign us a project like on spring break or whatever if we weren't going anywhere because she wanted to keep us out of trouble. And she had a older Kenmore that we would use. And then the quilting didn't come around until my mother-in-law came on the scene and she was the quilter. Um, and I was a very young, very, very young lady when I met her husband, my husband. 
Okay, so Linda said, I'll pick up my story in a moment. Lin Lisa. Oh, not Linda, Lisa, sorry, Lisa. Said, I started at eight, but my mom made me take a singer sewing class at 16 in exchange for using her car to get to work over the summer that year. I like your mom, that's a good idea. And then Carol Boston Simmons from Facebook said 12, I made a red shift, is that a shirt? I think she was trying to do a shirt, and earned money to buy red patent leather sling bags. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> Rhonda from Houston said, my mom started me at about five or six, letting me use Emily Ant. She's, you, she's using the machine that she still uses, you guys, to make Barbie blankets and Linda Woods at 11. My mom let me use her to make, use her scraps. And <laughs> that's awesome. So anyway, my mother-in-law was the bad influence for the quilting and she, um, she uh, was asking her son's girlfriend to take quilting class. We should take a quilting, don't you sew? Doesn't your mom sew? We should take a quilting class. And I'm like 19, I'm like wonk, wonk, wonk. I don't want to quilt, I'm 19. And then um, she, I married her son the next winter. That's right, I got married at barely 20 to an awesome guy that I'm still married to. Um, and he, and that next winter she was like, hey, now she's my mom-in-law. I signed us up for a quilting class. And I was like, oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so I went and took a class with mom and I was hooked at the time. So that would have been 20 when I started quilting, um, almost 25 years ago. And I remember mom she liked to work with the thimbleberry fabrics and when you're 19 years old, those don't really speak to you. And so I thought that's what quilting looked like. I didn't realize that like, um, you know, quilting has genres like music. You know, if you're not into pop or country, maybe you're into jazz and I, and I, it was the same with quilting. And so I really just, um, oh, lots of answers here. I really just fell in love with with not the thimbleberries kind of quilting. So that's how I started, 20, like 25 years ago. So Lisa Meadows says, our class included a project of our choice, but had to include a zipper and a button, learn to make a garment from start to finish, including reading the pattern and picking out the fabric. That is a skill. I cannot do any of that anymore. I'm a master quilter, but I can't hem a pair of pants. And then Nancy said, started around eight. My mom taught me the most most vivid memory early on was putting the machine needle through my finger. <laughs> what? <laughs> Girl, you need to pay better attention. <laughs> and then Missy said, my aunt made me some Barbie clothes and I got hooked at 10. Best classes in high school, apparel. They don't teach that anymore. You know that, right? They call the cooking classes culinary. My, my daughter took one. Ellie said, Ellie Campbell from Texas said, I was sewing on my mom's treadle machine, which I now own. Isn't that awesome? Uh, the first time I was in first grade, I completed my first quilt before I left for college at 18 years of age. And you're still quilting, that's amazing. For those of you ladies that have been quilting a long time like me, do you know I have so many quilts? I mean like, I seriously, they are stacked up in my, I have a trunk. And I actually weeded some this year because I just had too many, you know, the kids wanted like a minion quilt and now they could care less about the minions. So that was donated to a friend who had a young daughter. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I had to do some weeding with this last move because it just, my husband was like, okay, you are taking up the entire linen closet and a cedar trunk. I think it's time you go through some of these quilts. But with all of my quilts, I'm sure you guys are the same way. I feel like I've learned something along the way making the quilt, whether it was my first um, applique quilt or um, like this project will probably never go away because it's my first, you know, EPP, English paper piecing quilt. And um, so you, I want to hang on to those because I have memories from what I learned here. Sorry, guys. Oh, 
Carol, because she has so many quilts, she says she's switched to table toppers. It's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> they stack easier in the linen closet. <laughs> and you can quilt them yourself. There you go. That Quilt As You Go project, the green Tula one that I showed you guys a few weeks ago, I brought that one camping. It's not leaving the inside of the, the tent. I'm just, because it's white. It has white, white on it. But I did bring it with me because I got rid of some of the older ones. Oop, let's not lose my thread. Do you guys have any big plans this weekend? I'm camping. I made quilts for my kids in my king size bed many years ago by trial and error. Took my first quilting class just four years ago. Nice. I miss teaching my quilting classes. I miss teaching any classes at all. I um, I miss my students. I miss giving hugs. I miss the look on people's faces when they accomplish something that they didn't think they could accomplish. I miss all of those things. I w that was the other part of the conversation tonight that when Andy and I were talking about how things have changed so much and how our homes have become everything to us. And because they're literally our workplaces, they're our classrooms. And I said how, I asked him how long he thought it would be before we started having shows and quilting shows and stuff and it's like it just feels so long from now I mean even if you can get approval to have I do remember the clown costumes mom even if you uh, can have a show it's not like anybody's gonna show up if they don't feel like it's safe so it's gonna be a while look look how cute Do you guys like these little clippy thingies? I don't know what they're called. Clippets or something like that. Man, they're helpful with the EPPs because they hold my pieces together so my little fingers don't have to. Oh, wait, I gotta go this way. <laughs> You're making, Rhonda's making project bags. Is that like a tote bag, Rhonda? Fran. Hi, Fran. She said, I started when I was eight and completed 10 years of sewing in 4-H. Have continued to spend lots of time with my friends. Or should I say sewing machines? Uh, <laughs> they probably have names like mine do. Because they are our friends. We spend more time with them. Wonder Clips. Thank you, Connie. I love these little things. I know a lot of people use them for hand sewing binding on. I cheat, I machine all of my binding on. I know I'm not a purist, but I tell you, my hand bindings over the years will fail. Well, they will fail, but my machine bindings never fail. They will always be there. Oh, this should be challenging. I have my contacts on, which do not have my reading prescription. So this should be fun. I got it, yay! I need to get some readers in my car, apparently. Little reading glasses so I can see what I'm doing. So I'll tell you about our campsite, since I can't show you, we don't have any cell coverage there. It's on a river, it's on the American River, just outside of Natchez, Washington. And it is amazing. Andy drove out before me to get the right, um, to get a good spot, because there's no reservations here and a lot of people are still closed because of COVID. 
And so he wanted to make sure we had a spot to camp for the weekend. So him and a buddy drove out the day before me and then I went and met them. And he did a, such a good job. He seriously got like a 10 out of 10 on the camping. I think we're gonna post a video next week so you can see our site with the trailer. Um, Lynn, uh, Lisa Meadow says, I finally named my, oh, oh good, 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 good. So she named her white and tan machines finally. The tan machine came from me um, a few months ago. So one is Ada, Ida, and the other is Mina. I love that. Which one's the tan one? Is it Mina or Ida? No clear vinyl. Oh, Rhonda said that her project bags are clear vinyl, 12 by 12 zipper bags to hold blocks, needlework, etc. I need one of those this weekend because I had to like, <laughs> Sharon's like, you're in that cheese. <laughs> can, are you in that cheese, Sharon? You can bring me some machines here if you want. Mina, oh, the tan man tan machine's name is Mina. Is there a significance to that, Lisa? Was Mina someone special to you, or you just like the name? Oh, Sharon. Yes. If you're in Yakima, I'm literally just outside of Cliffdell. Um, I'm going to message you as soon as I'm off while I still have cell coverage and then we can figure out how to meet. Does that sound like a plan? I didn't realize you were coming over from Yakima. That's hilarious. <laughs> I guess my, my camping trip just became a write-off. <laughs> if I'm picking up machines, right? Is there any accountings on? Accountants on? Does that make? Is that a write-off? <laughs> Not much to write off. The camping is free. You're welcome, she says. <laughs> okay, so Lisa. Lisa does have a cute dog, Mom. You're right. Mina was a close great school friend and Ida was a dear friend we lost a few years ago. That's awesome. What a great way to honor their memory. That's amazing. Gloria on Facebook said, hey, I received my light bulb. Perfect. Thank you for the speedy delivery. Be safe and have a good time. I will. Thank you, Miss Gloria. Okay, so Carol Boston Simmons wants to know where do I find the quilting designs for the quilt along? Okay, I didn't get it done before we left. I'm so sorry. So I will have the quilting, the continuous line pattern post it on Monday when we get back. I'm sorry, girls. I'll be better next week. Uh, this trip, there was so much to getting the um, the trailer and stuff ready to go. I just didn't get a chance to do that. Boop, 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 boop. Don't lose my tail. <laughs> my mom says doing your podcast should be a write-off. It's true. Why is it when these pieces get bigger? Hi, Christina. Christine, how are you? Does these pieces get bigger and it gets harder to sew them together? Lisa said she'll forgive me. Will you guys all forgive me for not getting my quilting, my continuous line quilting instructions oh, it uploaded in time? By the way, Lisa, Andy didn't get your note. You said you were going to send him a note. <laughs> yes, you couldn't find them because Darlene didn't put them up. <laughs> it's going to be a new blog. Um, or yeah, blog entry on the website, Carol and Becky also on Monday. I'll, I'll post it separately, the, the continuous line quilting design. And then on, for, for Wednesday this week, I'll have it all uploaded at the same time. I, I honestly didn't think you guys were going to be interested in my design, 
which is why I didn't do it. So next time I'll be better. <laughs> Lisa said, check your spam folder. <laughs> just purse his lip and he, lips and he goes Andy's very stoic I am the personality of the family here that's why he says don't put me on camera <laughs> she's laughing <laughs> You didn't miss anything, Becky. I just am a terrible featherweight doctor as I'm trying to get out of town for vacation. So <clears throat> I think I told you guys that our trailer is kind of a weird overland trailer. So it has, it's basically a big utility trailer on the bottom. And then it has the whole back opens up and a whole full galley rolls out. So I have a full stove top and hot water sink system that all rolls out of the back, prep area and everything. It's my favorite part so far, hands down of the new trailer but we also sleep in a rooftop tent that sits on top of the trailer so we have to climb ladders to get up into our sleeping quarters and he andy strategically placed the tent so that our our upstairs view where our heads are pointed are of the beautiful american river 20 feet from it, huh? 20, feet from it. 20 feet from it in fact we didn't even have to use our sound machine for river water we just fell asleep to the actual river water noise it was pretty awesome lisa says besides why do you need to know if hubby's right there with you taking time off <laughs> lisa he works very hard he needs time off from time to time apparently i do too <laughs> It was super, Becky says, sounds wonderful, super relaxing. It was, it wasn't that bad, if I'm being honest. It was super hot though, so it was a little um, <clears throat> warm in the tent last night. I did have a little fan pointed at me, it helped. Oh, Marilyn says, I want to see what you're sewing on. Okay, let me get to the place where I can show you. Okay, so what I'm making is, hold on, I'll show you. Okay, I am making a um, little block. So, okay, if this is the first time you're joining me, Marilyn, I am not a hand sewer. I just picked up hand sewing, so when I'm in the car or doing this kind of stuff, I have something I can put in my lap that doesn't include a featherweight. So I was in uh, Sandpoint, Idaho a while ago, and she had on the clearance rack, she had these little kits. So this is called Abby's English Paper Piecing and it's written by that Sue Daly and I didn't even know what I was doing so I literally got onto YouTube. This is what the block looks like that I'm working on here. Isn't that cool? And then I have this, I'm working on my third pie piece. Look at that, how cute. Oh, let's turn this around the right way, darling. Look. Isn't that stunning? Look, and I fussy cut by little faces out of the middle. Uh, so this is just going to be a pillow topper. I am not making an entire quilt, but I'm making one, one circular 
block that I'm going to set onto a pillow. So I'm working on my third pie piece right now. There's um, eight total, um, which means I'm almost halfway through. Yay! And then that's that. So sounds like a it is a beautiful campsite, Mom. We, we took some video with the drone of it. I'm sure I'm going to cut something together for next week to share. Will you share a picture of your trailer? I know, Melissa. I keep forgetting to. Um, my husband and I are complimenting a trailer purchase. Also, how do you hook up your featherweight to power? Thank you. I totally get it if you all don't want. Oh, no. So it's we purchased a used turtleback trailer. That's the name of the manufacturer. They're made in the Phoenix area. Um, we, it, yes, first time I do handwork, love it, thank you. Um, and it's pretty awesome because it's like an inside trailer, but there's no walls. Does that make sense to everybody? So like, it has a huge 270 degree awning that floats all the way around the trailer and the tent sits on top. It has a hot water system. We can carry 42 gallons of water with us. It has solar set up for it with an inverter so we can plug, I mean, if I wanted to run a blender, I could run a blender on it. But the reason why we liked it, Melissa, is because it was a totally off grid setup. We didn't want to have to worry about being tethered to power per se if we wanted to take off for a longer trip and not have to worry about recharging batteries hence the solar setup and I so the part I don't like I don't like to be negative but the part that is the most irritating to me is they have these <laughs> Melissa I do watch Tula Pink's lives I totally watch her lives um, the these ladders you have to crawl up are pretty hard on the bare naked feet so you almost have to have shoes on the inside of the the tent the two-story tent in order to climb up and down the ladders but that's the only thing that I really don't care for about it literally that's it and it's not even really that big of a deal um, but I'm gonna I think I'm gonna post a video next week of some drone shots and stuff Andy got while we were in camp and I'll um, so you guys can see our setup in the campsite that we're at this weekend. Becky says we're hoping to go to Colorado in September. I'm more excited about taking one of my featherweights to sit and sew in the mountains than I am about any other part of the trip. Oh, Becky that's why you're my people. So I forgot real quick Melissa while you're still on I, how do I power my featherweight? You, I forgot to answer that. So I could technically plug the featherweight directly into the in power inverter on the trailer, but I also do, if I don't want to be tethered to the actual trailer, um, I have a um, sub-zero lithium battery, 200 battery, 200X battery that I bought that I can charge before we leave home and I can sew for hours on my featherweight on that little battery backup. I bought it at Bass Pro Shops and one of my other other lives with my um, red and white polka dotted machines uh, mini mouse was from the shores of Lake Ponderé and I did like a whole review on it I think it was back in May I think I did that back in May so you can look up the review so Melissa says have you ever watched Tula Pink's yes I I'm a fan of Tula do you guys want to see my next paper piecing project I already have it sitting here. Look, Tula Nova. I mean, come on. I have my templates and I have a pattern with all my little papers. So once I finish this little pillow topper, this is the next one. Bye, Lisa. Thanks for joining me. Oh, she, Lisa said she looked up the trailer online and it looks cool. <laughs> They're fun. One of my goals, guys, with, with the trailer is to actually start doing some more different style videos for you, um, more off-grid stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, you can stay tuned for that. All right, I'm gonna finish this one little seam here. So um, Monday 
is ask the doctor. I don't know what I'm talking about yet. I have to check the, the blogs over the weekend to see where the questions came in. Please lay out your colors that you're using in the block so I can get an idea of what I need. Oh, first quilt, my daughter thinks I may not do it right and I'm taking screenshots of it. So Pam, are you talking about the quilt as you go, the sew along? Every block on the sew along is going to be a colored fabric and a background fabric. So two fabrics. I happen to be using color gradation fabric you know, the kind that starts off light and goes to dark or even starts off yellow and then goes to purple. And so I have many different cuts of color in the same fat quarter. I bought a fat, like a big fat quarter of this color gradation fabric because I already had it and I didn't want to buy anything new for it. So um, I am going to finish my commitment is to finish the a whole quilt in the next couple weeks so I can take some really good pictures of it for you guys to be able to see. And then that way when we're doing our things on Wednesday, I can refer to specific parts of the entire quilt. Uh, and it's just going to be a two fabric for, per block. You can use a different color, grade, you know, a different color for each block, but you should only need two fabrics, a background and, and a color. Bridget said in 1946, oh, she's lived in a 1946 vintage trailer for three years. That's awesome. We used to have an old trailer too, like years ago. Oh, my mom says cute earrings for camping. So these little earrings, I can sleep in them. I don't have to take them out at night and they don't bother my ears. So they're my camping earrings because I would lose something like this at our campsite in 3.5 seconds unless it doesn't come out of my head. <clears throat> we are camping with a, a, some, a colleague of Andy's this weekend and they have a baby, you guys. They have the cutest baby. She is like 14 months old and her name is Frances, Frances the baby and I am having so much fun. She is adorable. All of this is good practice for grandmahood someday. Not yet though. you guys well I think I'm going to jump off of here I'm just about to finish up my last couple stitches I just want to thank everybody for joining me I will be back up again on Monday for ask the doctor and Wednesday for the sew along I will get the quilted instructions ship Shawana India or Indiana do you know where that is my husband's from Indiana hi Sean right so Oh, she's at a quilting retreat with her friends. Yes, Sharon, I'm not leaving the town before I talk to you. Don't worry, girl. <laughs> you can come up and see the trailer firsthand. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll be back up on Wednesday for the sew along, the quilt as you go sew along. And then I will be um, on a week from tonight for the sip and sew. I don't know where yet though. I've actually got an invitation to go sit on a patio the overlooking Puget Sound and I might do that. That's sounding like a good idea. Thanks for joining me guys. Thanks Carol. Thanks mom. I uh Sharon don't go anywhere. I'm, I'm calling you next. Thanks Rhonda. Y'all have fun she says. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. 